No man, I'm done buying Nikes. They're overpriced, their quality control sucks, and they've just been masterminding all of these trends that I see on social media. Hey mister. What the f- I heard you think you're done with me. I'm gonna need to call you back. Yeah, I'm, I'm over it. What, what if, if I, I showed, showed you this? this? No, I don't care about that. But it's don't a... you want these? No, I told you, I'm totally over it. We're re-releasing the true blues, and now they're in your favorite colors. No! Hi, I'm Rob. I'm ready to start, and today I'm going to be doing a sneaker tier list. Now, I haven't really seen anybody do something like this. It's a list of my grail sneakers. So before anybody gets mad at what I have to say about these shoes, they are my favorite shoes of all time. Not all of them proudly. We're going to start with Nikes. Uh, the first pair that I'm going to be talking about is the Nike Air Uptempo in the black colorway. I've always loved this shoe. I think it's a pretty good looking shoe, um, but it is kind of boring. To be honest, it's, it's pretty mid, if you want to use the word mid. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe we could put it in the mid tier. I think it's too boring to put right in the middle. So I'm gonna put it in D. Second sneaker we've got today is the Foam Posit. Foam Posit 1, specifically in the eggplant color. This is like an old favorite of mine. I fell in love with this shoe in middle school, but I also think that this shoe is kind of ugly. Um, I know everybody loves the Foam Posit or some people love the Foam Posit, including myself, um, but Man, I think we were just brainwashed into thinking it was a good looking sneaker. I'm gonna put it in E for eggplant. The Air Force 180 mid, another mid shoe. Yeah, I mean, it's a decent shoe, but it's just, it's also kind of boring. Like the, the sun's colorway only does so much. It only goes so far. Now the next grail on this list is the Kobe 9 Elite, the super high one. Um, I fell in love with this when I saw the gumbo color release for the all-star game. I couldn't get my hands on that pair, so I actually got the Victory pair. And now I kind of like the Victory color more than the Gumbo anyway, so I'm gonna put this in probably the A or the B. Um, it's a really good basketball shoe, and it's a good looking shoe. Now let's put it in B. And I think we got one more pair of Nikes, the Air Max 197, the Sean Wotherspoon exclusive from a couple years ago all corduroy man when this came out i was so crazy about this shoe and i'll show you how crazy i was about the shoe i was so mad when they released this and i realized how limited it was that i painted a pair of army boots in kind of the same colorway but in like camo colors man i wanted this shoe so freaking bad and I know that I will never own it because now they cost like $10,000. And for that reason, I got to put it, I got to put it in, in the F because it's just, it, it could ruin my life if I let it. So moving on from Nikes, we have a bit of an underdog coming in, the Reebok Pump Omni. Now this is probably not on anybody's grail list, but this is the first pair of shoes that really got me into sneakers. This was the first time that I was like playing basketball and I really realized that my shoes could look cool. It's got this baby blue with the like zebra stripe on the top. Uh, man, th this shoe has so many memories attached to it and it's it's really the one that started it all for me. So I'm gonna, I, I would put this in the freaking S or A tier but I'm gonna put it in B just so nobody kills me. So next in the non-Nike basketball type shoes, we got the Puma Dreamer, the yellow and black colorway, the J. Cole sneaker. I was crazy about this as soon as it released and I actually saw one of the low pairs at a Puma store and just realized how well built this shoe is. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get my hands on a pair, but because of how Good looking, I think this shoe is, and then also how well built it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it up there in the A. Moving on to Adidas, I have the D Rose 2.5. I had to throw a Derrick Rose signature shoe in here. 
He was really my first favorite NBA player. If it wasn't a Derrick Rose shoe, I don't know if I would be so crazy about it. It's kind of boring. I'm gonna throw it in with these other boring shoes right down in the, the D tier. I've got another Adidas for you, um, kind of an obscure one. This tubular mock runner. Um, this is a cool looking shoe, man. The three stripes are super subtle in there. Man, I really like the way this shoe looks. I'm gonna make this the first C tier shoe. I'm gonna fill in that spot there. Now I don't have any Adidas Yeezys in here, but I always loved the Nike Yeezy 2 in that uh, solar red color. Um, and I always wanted to get like a bootleg pair, cut off the strap and put something ridiculous like a hieroglyph on the side. I don't know, that's just an idea I've always had and it would probably turn out really ugly, so I'm gonna put that in F for totally different reasons than the Sean Wotherspoon. A shoe that's kind of a similar look to the Yeezy 2 though, but totally different shoe, is this brand black mil spec. Um, this thing is crazy. One of my coworkers at City Workshop showed me this. Shout out to Martin. Um, man, this shoe is insane. It's like that sneaker boot, but it's also like tactical looking. I think it's really unique. I've never seen anything else quite like it. I'm gonna put it right up here with a couple of my other favorites. That's high praise. You should definitely send me a pair. Had to throw a pair of Vans on here too. The Chucka boot in this hula camo. Um, I've never seen a Vans shoe that looks quite like this before. I own this shoe as well. It's one of my favorites. I think putting that in the C is fine. Now moving to the upscale side of that kind of casual wear shoe. I got these Veja V10s. I love, really like this color and I like how the collar comes up. And I also saw these in person and they are made so well and made responsibly. So I'm gonna throw these right in the middle too. I think they're uh, I think they're at par with both of these, with the Adidas and the Vans. And the last kind of artisanal sneaker that I have in here is the Collegium Pillar Destroyer. Um, this one's tough. I think that they pulled off the Jordan 1 look better than any other imitator. And from what I've heard, they're made really well too. I think that the bread colorway is a little bit too on the nose. If I had to get a pair, I'd probably choose this kind of sage green and white. Um, and I really like the way this looks, but I don't know. At the end of the day, it's, it's still just kind of a copy and... Uh, no matter how much I like this and how much I would wear the hell out of them, I, I gotta I gotta put it in the D. So we have the Jordan 1 look-alike. And now we have the Jordan 1. Now, the Jordan 1's great. The Jordan 1's fine. It's it people like it because it's iconic. Nike just saturated the market. And it's, it's not that special of a shoe. It's just like, like I've owned a pair of Jordan 1s. It's, they're not nice to wear. They hurt. And it's just, it's, it's a glorified Air Force 1. I'm just going to say it. I, I respect the iconography of it, but it's not going on my tier list. Sorry. The first Jordan that I will put on this tier list though, is the Jordan 3 in the true blue colorway. Man. My friend's older brother had these when we were kids, and this might be the first Jordan that I saw, and I was like, that's a good looking sneaker. I think it's one of the only ones where the elephant print looks really good. I don't think I'd put it in the A tier, but it's, it's at least a B. I didn't close this closet. Who am I? And I'm going in numerical order for the Jordans. I think that the three is cool, but the four is so much cooler. The green glow four, was until last year the only sneaker I copped on release, like before the sneakers app, just going on nike.com and scoring it in the first few seconds. And 2023 marks 10 years that I've had this shoe. I have not stopped wearing this shoe and it just has held up like crazy. It's It's gotta be one of my favorite sneakers of all time, if not, my favorite sneaker that I've ever owned. It may not be everyone's favorite, but man, I 
love the green glow four. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the A tier. And if you see I like the threes and fours, you could only guess that I like the fives. Man. I just want Nike to re-release the Metallic Fives, and then I I can I can just be happy. I'll never have to own a pair of Nikes again. That the the Metallic Five is the one shoe, the one Nike that I I have to own. It's just to me, it's the best looking sneaker ever. And I know, one, once I heard that they're re-releasing the Breads next year, the Bread Fours in the reimagined, I know they're gonna give this the reimagined treatment in 2025 and I'm going to be so mad because they're going to look like shit. But honestly, I've been tempted to drop way too much money on these sneakers on the 2016 release too many times. Yeah, the 2016 release is my favorite without the 23 on the side. Yeah, man, I stand by my assessment that the Jordan 5 Metallic is the best looking sneaker of all time. It, it tops the list. It's, it's going in the S tier. It's our first S. Now that I'm looking at the 5 and the 4 next to each other, I love the Green Glow 4 just as much as the Metallic 5. And the and the Green Glow 4s have never done me wrong. I'm I'm going to put I'm going to put that up there with it. I'm going to I think it deserves that spot. I also love the Fire Red and Grape 5, but if I had to pick one 5, it's it's always going to be the Metallic. Listen. I always wanted a pair of Jordan 6s. And every pair that I saw online, I loved so much. And I picked up the white and navy ones that released last year. Check out my summer favorites video. And the more I wear them, especially like if I wear them with white socks, they just, they look like, like geriatric shoes. And I kind of realized that the Jordan 6 looks best in black. Um, the infrared would probably be my pick, but the shoe that I fell in love with is the Oreo Jordan 6. And man, this got one release and they never looked at it again. And I think this is one of the best looking sneakers I've ever seen. It's right up there, man. Like it, again, anybody I went to middle school with will tell you that I was obsessed with these shoes. And the last pair of Jordan retros I have on this list is the 10 in the stealth color. This was my first pair of Jordans. My grandmother got these for me. I wore these until there were practically holes in them. I still have them in a closet, but they're unwearable now. Um, yeah, man, this this is one of my favorite Jordans of all time. I'm gonna put it right up there with the with the Oreo Six. Man, I don't know if I'm just like Nike brainwashed, but the Jordan Retro line has got to be the best looking line of sneakers. They were innovative at the time as far as basketball shoe technology goes, and they hold up today as like a casual sneaker. And I mean, I've played basketball in Jordans too. The one thing I will say though, the fusions usually suck. The, the like mixes between retros are pretty bad, but the Spizike is the only one that looks decent. Yeah, this has got to go. This is, no, I'm just kidding, man. This, this shoe is kind of ugly. Um, I'll put it in the E. I gotta put the Greats Hirsch sneaker boot. I've owned two pairs of this, never done me wrong. Greats makes a good product. It might not be a sneaker, but it is to me. It's one of my most worn shoes of all time. I I'm popping this in the S tier too. There you go, that's my top three. So yeah, that's my list of favorite sneakers. I appreciate you tuning into the channel. I make all kinds of fashion and music content. Um, this one is a little out of the box for me, but check out some of my other videos and uh, stay tuned for what's to come.